Hello and welcome to The Daily Space for today, Tuesday, January 28th, 2020. I'm your host, Dr. Pamela Gay, and I am here to put science in your brain. If you are part of Generation X like me, you may hear the date, January 28th, and remember exactly where you were in 1986 when the Challenger lifted off but failed to reach orbit. 34 years ago today, during middle school lunch block on the East Coast, the Space Shuttle Challenger lifted off from Cape Canaveral with a crew of six astronauts and one school teacher, a school teacher from New Hampshire. For each of the older generations, there has been this kind of a winter disaster. For the boomers, there was the January 27, 1967 loss of Apollo 1. The three-man crew lost their lives during a pre-flight test when a spark ignited their cabin's oxygen atmosphere. For millennials, there was the February 1, 2003 loss of the space shuttle Columbia, which disintegrated during reentry. One of the things we talk about a lot here in CosmoQuest is the simple fact that space is hard. Getting to space is one of the most challenging things a machine with or without a human on board can accomplish. And the only more challenging task may be getting to the bottom of the ocean. It is amazing that so few astronauts have died. This month, we saw the in-flight abort test of the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. That successful test sets us up to start sending astronauts to space with a new spacecraft. As we do that, it is important for us to remember both past tragedies and also not let those tragedies hold us back. I was in the sixth grade when the Challenger was lost 73 seconds after launch. It was the cold that killed the seven men and women on their way to space. Plastic loses its ability to flex and bend in the cold, and that day in Florida, it was just below freezing. Each of the sections of the solid rocket boosters are sealed with plastic O-rings that are designed to prevent exhaust from leaking, from combusting. (sighs) When those seals fail, the gas in the rockets has more than one way to go. It can either go out the bottom of the rocket or out through the faulty seal. These O-rings are in many ways no different than the tape you use on a gas connector for a gas stove or the plastic wings, rings and faucet handles. On that too cold day, the O-ring had contracted and the gas exta- escaped. The solid rocket booster exploded. The shuttle shattered. The crew cabin fell to the sea as seven men and women struggled to use their training to figure out how to survive. An oxygen tank was turned on. We know they lived through the blast. They, like every other astronaut we've lost so far, had the time to realize what was happening. But their experience hasn't deterred people from wanting to become astronauts. Their experience, this diverse crew, their experience in front of an entire generation of school children didn't cause the children to turn away from space and stop dreaming. NASA had, without meaning to, created a martyr for everyone. In each of those astronauts, each of us could, if we wanted to, find someone whose dream we could define in our own new way. We may be just months from the launch of humans on board a SpaceX Crew Dragon, It is unclear at this time how long it will be until humans launch on Boeing's Starliner capsule, but it could be just half a year. As we prepare to return to space on this still-to-be-proven new spacecraft, we need to remember space is hard. There will be loss of life again, and we need to remember that the astronauts accept that risk when they sign up. We need to do right by them and remember that every time life has been lost, it has been due to engineering failures. From Apollo, we learned that spacecraft need to have an easy-to-open exit, and the door was changed from opening inward to opening out. We also learned that a pure oxygen atmosphere is far too risky. From Challenger, we learned to listen to engineers and not push our systems all the way up against their temperature limits. From Columbia, we learned again, because sometimes once isn't enough, 
that cold and plastics don't mix, as it was determined that falling cold foam bouncing against the shuttle's wing was what created the damage that led to the loss of life. We learned, and now we need to not forget. As we move forward, let's celebrate the lives of those who died in the pursuit of space, and let's be inspired to once again dare mighty things. But with care and in collaboration, and while remembering to listen to our engineers. Okay, that's, that's my tale of morality for the day, my celebration on this day in history. But before I tie up this episode, which is going to be shorter than normal because there wasn't a whole lot of news, I do want to give you one pretty picture from science. Later this week, the Spitzer Space Telescope is going to be well, retired from NASA. And um, this is going to make room in the budget and organizational structure for the upcoming JWST, which will observe the sky in the same wavelengths as Spitzer. As part of the mission's winding down, we're getting new data of old favorites. And today's release brings us the Southern Hemisphere's Tarantula Nebula. The region of this region of illuminated gas was one of Spitzer's first targets and has been revisited year after year with data being taken in 2003, 2006, and well now in 2009. This data has allowed us to see stars forming, identify the role of silicates in forming the dust, and to monitor the expanding shock waves from supernova 1987A. While the image has been released, the totality of the science is still to come, and we look forward to bringing you those results when we have them. But for now, that rounds out this episode of The Daily Space. Thank you all for being here. The Daily Space is produced by Susie Murph and is a product of the Planetary Science Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. We are here thanks to the generous contributions of people like you. Want to become a supporter of the show? Check us out at patreon.com slash cosmoquest. And I will now hang out and answer your questions. Please precede them with that purple circle with a purple star in the center, and that will make it easier for me to find them. All right, so let's see what we have. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. Um, hello, Paranor. Hello, our Instra. Hello, Larry Weird. Yes, Malachi is the most mellow of dogs, unless you're the wrong skinny tall guy. Um, he really doesn't like skinny tall white guys. Um, hello, Susie. Hello, Binary Ablaze. Hello, DPI. Um... Hello, our instructor. I think I already said hello. I think I'm hitting that point in my brain where I'm going to say hello multiple times. Hello, Guido. Uh, hello, Zizink. Hello, Kerbal. Hello, Broken Symmetry. Um, hello, Paranor. Yes, space is hard. Hello, Bad Panda Bear. Hello, Broken Symmetry. Oh, Broken Symmetry is pointing out that Richard Feynman did a demo on a panel with, a, with rubber in a glass of ice water to demonstrate the failure. Um, yeah, so, so Arnstro points out a nuance. So what happened was the O-ring on the solid rocket booster failed, allowing exhaust, extremely hot exhaust, to escape and this heated up the oxygen tank that then exploded. So this was a multiple point of failure problem. <sighs> yeah, Larry points out correctly that at Morton Thiokol, engineers were begging not to launch, but management overruled them. Um, Guido says correctly also, Challenger was less engineering and more politics at work. Um, okay, we may have a Terminex guy coming in just to warn you. 
Um, I'm going to need to pause for a moment to lock the dogs in with me. I think I have all three of them, maybe. No, I currently have zero dogs. I have zero dogs right now, folks. Zero dogs. Um, I'm being told I have to come upstairs and get the dogs. One moment. Um, oh, actually, I have no dogs. Let me tell Kyle that. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping that he can sort things out. We will find out in a moment, and there may be an invasion by a Terminex guy. There go the dogs. Okay, um, so as I was saying, Guido correctly pointed out that Challenger was less engineering and more politics at work, which is the saddest thing. Oh, broken symmetry, that is a... Oh, I have one dog. I have a Malachi. Okay, hold on. Locking, locking Malachi in with me. I will give Malachi a treat. Hi. Can you come here? Can you come here? I would love it if you would come on camera. Come here. Come here. It's okay. Come on. Trying to get at least a nose on camera now. There, there, there's, he's too polite. He's far, far too polite. But I shall give him treats. All right. So, um... Continuing to look for questions with the acknowledgement there may be a Terminex guy. Um, yeah, DPI has the correct way to expand out the acronym JWST. Hello, fracid chemist. Um, so the tarantula nebula is really kind of amazing. You don't see the tarantula face in these fancy pants Spitzer or Hubble images. But if you're using just like a 12 inch telescope, it's really creepy. So, so the way it turns out is this is the mandibles. This is one eye, this is the other eye. And these are the things that like stick out on, on tarantula mouths. It really looks like you're looking into the face of a tarantula in part because the human eye um, turns everything black and white when we're looking at very low light situations. So you just see this basically black and white image of, of a tarantula. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what else is in here. Um... Arnstro is talking about something dimming. Are you still talking about Betelgeuse? Looking to see what else is in here. Um, it's okay, Malachi. Yeah, and I'll hold Mal. I'm still streaming. I'm almost done. Yeah, I can see him right there. We're good. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap up shortly. Um, let's see what else is in here. <laughs> I think that our instrument must have written in the wrong window or something. Um, thank you so much for this sub for six months, Ironheart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, it's it's rarely a no. It's rarely a panic over new floofs paranoia. It's much more of a, huh? They're learning to be silent. The dogs have figured out how to open the door at the top of the stairs. It's just one that swings on hinges. Thank you, thank you for the bits. Do you want bits? You do. Can you come closer? Come on, it's okay. It's okay. Can you get your nose? Can you get your nose? Okay, you guys saw a nose. I think you saw a nose. Come here. Come here with your nose. 
Let's get a little nose on camera. Oh, I saw your tongue. Come on, you can do it. Okay, that's all the Malachi apparently you can get. Um, yeah, Arnstro is pointing out the details on the Challenger. Um, yeah, that was just one, one hell of a destruction. Ah. Uh, Thank you, Broken Symmetry, for all the bits. Thank you. Um, so Freckled Chemistry asks, what is a solid rocket booster? It is a literally solid compound that is a mix of, ox of oxidizer and fuel that uh, they're able to do a controlled burn of, but you can't shut it off once it starts. Liquid engines, on the other hand, mix the oxidizer and fuel in real time, creating the firing of the engines. So um, Space Launch System is what SLS stands for. It's the new si system being built by a consortium of Boeing, Lockheed, and other companies that is reusing the old space shuttle technology. Um, Freckled Chemist, yes, there is only one Tarantula Nebula, only one, and it's kind of awesome. Um, I'm sure our nebula was important to someone, Hanny. Larry asks, have you heard that Artemis is renamed and a new plan, a bill was introduced? The bill was introduced, Larry. Come here, Malachi. It's okay. It's okay. Come here. I got ya. Okay, so I have the dog in my hand. We may have a termite guy coming through to check things. Um, so, so the House hasn't passed the funding bill yet. Um, if it does, we will be doing a special episode on it because it kind of changes everything. But currently, it's just a proposal in the House. And um, that proposal in the House has to be voted on, go to the Senate, and then be signed by the president. Um, so let's see what else. Thank you, Trekker Kev, for the bits. Um, looking to see what else is in here. Okay, so I think I hit the end of the questions. Um, and we do have a Terminex guy here who would like to check our house for termites because our house likes to get termites. And my dog is now laying down awkwardly beside me, making it hard to hold his collar. So I am going to try and roll the credits. Let's switch over to the correct window. It said no. Oh, I got my stream deck up and working again. And it's like, no, I don't want to work. You can't make me work. Silly stream deck. All right. So um, Annie will be here tomorrow with Rocket Wednesday. And we'll see how the rest of the week goes. And there may be a Starlink launch early tomorrow morning. If there is, we'll bring it to you live right here on CosmoQuest. But for now, have a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever in the world you may be. Bye-bye. <laughs>